Daniel Meadows was fresh out of college and beginning the next chapter of his life when he began suffering debilitating headaches. Those headaches turned out to be a tumor, one that was very close to the area of the brain necessary for language. So Daniel did something most of us cannot imagine. He was awake for his own brain surgery. Morning, morning. Daniel Meadows still has moments of total disbelief. I'm ready as me. All right, let's do this thing. That all of this must be happening to someone else. Look at my nose. How many fingers do you see? Two. No? One. Great. Give me a big smile. Just months after graduating from Auburn University in Alabama, he is at Emory St. Joseph's Hospital, about to undergo awake brain surgery to remove a tumor. Daniel's only symptom of the tumor, crushing headaches. I was expecting meeting Daniel that he was not gonna be able to talk to me or that he was gonna have significant difficulties in creating language and communicating. That's because the tumor took up residence right next to the part of the brain we use to create language and communicate. You can see that this is a relatively large uh, tumor. It's about the size of a lemon um, and is again, compressing parts of the brain. The MRI images are reversed. The tumor is on the bottom left part of Daniel's brain, the inferior lobe, next to our communication headquarters. Today is MRI day, active MRI day is what they call it. Apparently I'm supposed to be doing things while they have me all hooked up to see where my brain works. We meet up with Daniel the week before surgery when he gets a functional MRI. So we're going to do the first task, the finger tapping. Again, just think the words to yourself. Do not speak and don't move any other part of your body. By tapping his fingers and thinking specific thoughts, they can see which parts of his brain light up. Neurosurgeon Dr. Chris Dybert will use this to help him navigate during surgery. That MRI you had was incredibly helpful. I think that a lot they don't this, know if it's cancer. They only know okay. they need to try to remove it, and Daniel is going to help. We're even going to take out most of the tumor while you're still asleep, okay? Then we're going to wake you up. We'll do the testing. Um, the guys, should have they come by and kind of run through the little bit of the testing that we're going to have you do, or have they not come by yet? I haven't seen that. Okay, yet. so yeah. they'll be by shortly. Okay. What is Dr. Hebert doing for you today? He has taken out a brain tumor. This is Paul Meadows, my father. Uh, nice yeah. to meet you, sir. Meet you and then my mother is over there, Anita Meadows. It's time to say goodbye to his parents. We thank you, Lord, for your, your mighty power and who you are. Amen. 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 Daniel is the baby, the youngest of four, from a close-knit family whose passion is epic hikes around the world. But the mountain they are facing today is one they never expected. And so it comes down to what is the glue in this family, faith. To an incision that starts like this. The smaller the tumor, the more critical this is. This is a hard tumor to miss. Yeah. We want to monitor how well he can talk and speak during surgery okay. so that we don't take out part of the brain that causes okay. his ability to talk. Five minutes into surgery, Daniel is awake. Good job, Dan. It's Dr. Dybert here, okay? You're doing wonderful. Everything's going perfectly. We're going to do the testing and then we'll let you go back to sleep here once you wake up a little more. For two hours, he answers questions about where he went to dinner the night before. What did you have to eat last night? Out 
identifies objects. Fish, fish, sofa, book, a doll, cooking. Makes conversation. Did you go to school? Where'd you go to school? Counts backwards. Seven, six, five, four. All while Dr. Dybert works to remove the tumor. So this is obviously very abnormal here. This kind of grayish color, okay. This is normal brain here. We've had a couple speech arrests directly over top, more anterior over top of the tumor. We can test and say we can direct an electrical impulse to the brain, and if a person can no longer speak temporarily, then we know that this is an important part of the brain, that this is an area that we can't do surgery in and we have to avoid it. It's an unusual situation to have a doctor inside your brain while you talk sports. So Dan, are you a hockey guy? Soccer. Soccer. You a Liverpool fan? Uh, what? Who you watch besides Atlanta? <laughs> yeah, they had a tough match. The brain itself doesn't have any pain sensation, and it's the reason we can do this. After two hours... they do doing great, man. That's super, super helpful. You're doing awesome. Daniel gets to sleep. There's kind of a, a little bit of a hole where it was, and the brain has started to fill in that space, 100% success. Um, his MRI after surgery showed that the, completely the tumor had been removed. Daniel's language was not impacted. The surgery was a success, but the pathology overshadows that. Now we know again that some of those cells have spread to other places, most likely. Those cells that may have spread to other places are cancer, glioblastoma, an aggressive, high-grade tumor. Hey, Hi. it's good, good to see, see you. you. You look much better than last time. <laughs> hey. Today's the meeting with Daniel and his parents. So as I told you in the hospital, surgery couldn't have gone any better. I mean, and that a lot of that is to your credit. Everything that I can see on the MRI is gone, okay? Um, there is no easy way to deliver this news. This is some sort of glioma, okay? Um, there are, there is a little bit of a range of gliomas, okay? The uh, ones that we hear most about are things called, is a problem called glioblastoma, okay? And that's John McCain, Bo Biden, Ted Kennedy. We can't cure gliomas with surgery. This will recur at some point. No one can predict the future. As you get, um, you start to kind of move back into normal life. That's Daniel works to absorb the information. So we don't know how severe or... I mean, it, it's a serious problem. From the first day we met him, when he didn't know if his tumor was cancer, Daniel told us this. I haven't asked why me. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't see why it should be somebody else. They leave Dr. Dybert's office. Their plan includes chemotherapy, radiation, and faith. Just the next step. Yeah. Well, we always knew there'd be a yeah. next step, so. One step at a time. <laughs> Daniel has finished radiation and is continuing chemotherapy. He worked full time through his treatment and says he's feeling well.